Hey everyone, this is a tutorial to show you how to install and use Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. And I'm going to be using Ardor and Ubuntu Studios. So if you're a Linux user and you wanted to use the uh, Spitfire Audio's free plugins, then this is a video for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the Spitfire Audio app. Page, and this is a bit hard to find, I'll lick it at the bottom, but if you Google Spitfire Audio app, then you'll find it, and we're going to download the Windows version. So just click on that, and that will start downloading, and then we're going to head over to the free tab at the top, and here we have the Symphony Orchestra Discovery Edition, and we have the Labs, and we have Piano Book. So we'll talk about how we use all of that. I've already installed both BBC Symphony Orchestra and Labs, so it'll look a bit different, but you'll see exactly how. Once we've downloaded the installer, we don't actually download anything else from here. So the rest of the downloads will happen in the app. But in order to get the BBC Symphony Orchestra uh, Discovery Edition for free, you do have to uh, order it from this page. So go into that page and you can add it to your cart. Here you can see it's already been added. It'll ask you to sign up, and once you sign up, it will uh, appear in the installer, okay? So that's all we have to do with the website. Now we can move on. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the terminal. So it's Control-Alt-T on Ubuntu, or you can just open any terminal that you use. And we're going to type in sudo apt-get install Carla hyphen bridge hyphen win 32. Okay, and it'll prompt you for okay. Uh, once you input your password, I've already got it. So uh, it gives me that message. And once we've done that, we're going to do sudo apt get install Carla hyphen bridge hyphen win 64 and hit okay. And those are the two things that we'll need in order to use uh, the Spitfire audio um, plugin on Carla. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the folder where you downloaded the Spitfire installer. By default, it should be in your downloads folder. So CD and then the shortcut for home, which is this tilde uh, slash and then downloads with a capital D. Now, just for you to know, a great uh, shortcut if you're new to Linux is if you start typing the capital D for downloads, or in fact, you need enough, so capital D-O-W, and then hit tab, it will auto-complete the folder, and that way you also won't make any typos. So navigate to there, and if we type in ls, we'll be able to see that uh, here are all the files and all the folders that we can find inside downloads. And we'll notice right there that we have uh, Spitfire Audio Win, okay, and then that version. So now that we know that it's there, we're going to use Wine. So we're going to type Wine. Spitfire with a capital S, and if you do that after the S, you should already be able to hit tab, and it will auto-complete that for you. Now, this is assuming you have Wine installed with Ubuntu Studios. If you don't have Wine installed yet, um, that's a whole setup in and of itself, and I'm not actually uh, <laughs> proficient enough with Wine to make a tutorial about that, but there are lots of places out there that can show you how to set up Wine for everything you need, so just have a look at that. But assuming you're on Ubuntu Studios, this should work just out the bat. Wine and then Spitfire Audio EXE. And it will start running. And it will open up this window here, which is the uh, Spitfire Audio installer. Okay. Now, if you feel confident, uh, you can choose where you would like to install it. I'm so nervous because it took me uh, a long time to set this up the first time. So I just leave all of the default locations as they are. So we're going to hit Next. And you do want to remember where it is. Uh, Spitfire Audio Folder, uh, Install. And that should all run perfectly and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, at the end of it, we can actually launch it straight away if we want to. And we might as well go and do that now. So if we hit Finish, it should start. It might take a long time. Be very patient. What we don't want to do is to overload it and cause it to freeze. It takes a long time for some things to work. But if you're just patient, then hopefully, as long as it doesn't actually get stuck, um, you should end up with this splash screen for the Spitfire um, installer. Now, from here, they're asking if you want to send data. I pressed accept because I didn't want to have any problems. You can probably decline and it should be okay. Then we're going to be prompted with our details. So you have to have your login details from the site. Uh, input those. And you can either choose to remember me or not. 
this screen can also take a while, so please be patient and wait, but eventually we hope to get to this screen where it's going to be all of our uh, default uh, paths. So my recommendation is just to leave it as it is. It'll all be in the same folder, and then all we have to do is to navigate to that folder with Carla afterwards, and it should all be there waiting for us. If you want to change this in future after you've installed it, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and then we reach to this uh, page here. Now, you first have to validate your email and actually get BBC SO as your product. And once you've done that on their website and, and through your email, then it should appear here in your products. Okay, if you look up at the top, there's a tab for labs. That won't appear here but the BBC SO should appear right away. So once we have that, you can click Install, and it should install all of the data. And the same thing with the actual plugin. You uh, At the bottom, you have to hit Install, uh, choosing where you want to install it. And this, again, will take a while for it to get authorized, and depending on your connection speed, it's quite a lot of uh, information to be downloading. So just please be patient and wait and eventually it should work. Okay, and just to show you quickly how the labs work, when you click the tab, you'll have all of the options for the labs to download straight from here. Anyone that you want, you can just click on Install, and the same as the BBC SO, it'll take a moment to authorize, and it should start downloading, and you will have it in the labs plugin. So that we will access through uh, Carla when we get to our door. Okay, and lastly, if you do want to change your default path at some point, here it is in the settings. You can also change the auto login from here. Um, and that's just the general settings for the plugin and how it works. Okay, so now we're going to go into Carla. So make sure you open the software. If you're on Ubuntu Studios, everything should be set up. And we're going to go down to the bottom here to the experimental tab. And here we're going to click on enable plugin bridges, enable wine bridges, enable jack applications. And once you've done that, you can hit OK. OK, so here we are, the final step. Now, assuming you're in Ubuntu Studios, Ardo should be set up. We're going to go over to the left column over here, and we're going to right-click. And that will open this menu where we can add a MIDI track. Now, if it recognized your plugins over here, you can search through for Carla Patch Bay and then VST. If you don't see it there, it's okay. We'll be able to add it later and you can just add any of them or no instrument and then go over here and click add and close. And so if you couldn't find it there for whatever reason, we can just right click over here. It will open up a menu to select a plugin. And so open up uh, the plugin selection which will be this window here. And then uh, in the search bar, you can search for Carla. I'm going to look for Carla Patch Bay. If you want, you can um, mark it as a favorite. That's what I do. And then we're going to go down and select Add. And once we've added, we can insert plugin. Now that we're in Carla, uh, this is what it's going to look like when we open up our door. And we're going to go over to the left here. And we're going to have the option here of going to our home folder. But of course, our plugin isn't in the home folder. So we're going to have to add a new place. So how do we do that? Well, over here, we're going to have this green plus. And if we click that, it's going to open up this window. So once we're in here, what we're going to do is we're going to press Control H. And as you can see, what that does is that opens up all of our hidden folders and uh, that's where we want to be. So control H to hide them, control H to show them. If that doesn't work, you can always right click and you can't see but a little window will show up where you'll have the option to show hidden folders. You can just click that and do it from there. Once we have our hidden folders, they are all marked with a full stop a dot in the beginning and that's how it's uh, marked as hidden so here the bottom one we can see dot wine so that's where we want and you can add this whole folder to Carla but we're gonna go straight to show you where the VST plugins that we're looking for are so we're gonna go into Drive C and it can go in both ways but I'm just gonna show you the regular one program files and right here we're going to see the folder for Spitfire audio that's where that's the folder that the plugin uses and we are after VST plugins. So that is the folder we want. We're going to mark that and we're going to hit OK. 
And so now we can see on the right here that we have, sorry, on the left we are in VSDL plugins. And you should have Labs and uh, BBC Orchestra uh, here already. So if we drag in um, the Labs uh, into our screen, you might find that you don't see it anywhere. This was a really confusing part for me in the beginning. And so what um, what happens is we actually have this little window on the left. And here you'll see the whole screen where everything is. So if you can't find your labs or you can't find the settings, look for the screen over here and you can drag the square over there. Okay, so we're going to bring our labs to the middle. We're going to connect. I have a MIDI input. So I'm going to connect the MIDI input into it and then I'm going to connect it to the audio output. And there you go. So, as long as everything was done uh, correctly, it should be playing either with a MIDI or you can also click the keyboard down here and should be sounding uh, now. So if you've done everything right and you're actually getting a sound out of it, well done, congratulations for making it this far. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Obviously, there's a lot more to talk about Ardor and its settings and Carla and how to utilize it. And then there's also the interface with BBCSO uh, the plugin, how to use it in labs. So if you'd like to see a video about that, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And I will leave some links to the labs YouTube channel, which is a great channel. They just started recently. You should uh, go and check it out to see what they're doing and what labs is really all about. And uh, I'll leave a link to the BBCSO plugins uh, trailer to show you what it's like and uh, a tutorial uh, that shows you basically the rundown of what it is and how best to use it. If you would like, I am actually going to be starting to stream some live uh, composing that I'll be doing in Ardor and LMMS uh, on Linux uh, with open source software. So if you're interested in seeing that and uh, maybe talking about music theory and that side of things, how to compose, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if it's anything that would be interesting for you, if you would like to know about that. Otherwise, I hope this was useful. I hope you managed to uh, get it all set up and you can start creating some wonderful music for free right now. Enjoy. That's the end for me. Thanks.